Hi, thank you for joining the Deeper Dive webinar. Uh, it's now 1.02 Eastern, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. My name is Nagin Aftab, and I'm the Partnerships Growth Manager at Los Ants. Today, we have Los Ants Education Lead, Teron Foxworth, who will speak about how learning IoT is similar to learning Los Ants. Myself and Brandon Canaday, our Chief Product Officer, will also be here to answer questions at the end. Before we get started, I want to address a couple of housekeeping items. This webinar is being recorded and the replay will be made available to you in a few ways. After this webinar, we'll send you an email with the link to the replay and the webinar will also be made available on LOSAN's YouTube page as well as on our Deeper Dive webpage. Throughout the webinar, you may have questions that you'd like to ask. Uh, if you do, I would like to point out a couple of key features in the Zoom conference. You can use the Q&A feature or the chat function to post questions, and I'll be monitoring those throughout the call. At the end of the call, I'll moderate a Q&A session with the posted questions with Tehran and Brandon. Uh, and if you have to leave early, no worries, the Q&A will be posted as a PDF alongside the replay link. So to start, let's do a quick review of Losan and our enterprise IoT platform. Losan is an application enablement platform. What that means is that LOSANT provides enterprises with the building blocks to create their own IoT applications. Our platform consists of five key components to help customers achieve that. Edge compute, devices and data sources, data visualization, our visual workflow engine, uh, and end user experiences. Our customers and partners utilize these tools to create the robust IoT applications they put in front of their end users. LOSANT is a leader in the industrial, telecommunications, and smart environment spaces, and we've offered this platform for all sorts of customers, ranging from startups to companies in the Fortune 100. So if you're interested in learning more, please reach out and we'd be happy to set up some time for a much more in-depth conversation. While LOSANT provides a software foundation for IoT, there are many other components that have to come together to create an IoT application. So we've surrounded ourselves with a great ecosystem of partners. This includes strategic partners with whom we share sales and go-to-market strategies, solutions partners who work with clients to develop end-to-end -end IoT applications, and lastly, technology partners that can provide hardware connectivity and other services to complete an IoT solution. Today, we'll be discussing the IoT technology stack as a whole and where LOSANT fits into that. Here to walk you through that is Teron Foxworth. He'll teach you how to use this framework to build your application in the world of IoT and in the world of LOSANT. So at this time, I'll let him share his screen and get started. Thank you, Nagin. Just to sound check first, how do I sound? Sound great, Teron. Awesome. And sharing my screen now. Sweet, how's that? Looks good. Awesome. Thank you all so much for joining with me today. Uh, this presentation is very personal to me. Uh, years ago when I joined Locent, uh, I was handed a microcontroller as a part of my onboarding. And that set me on the journey to learn about IoT and technology that I'm super excited to share with you today. And really after countless webinars that I've given and listened to from the team, workshops, trainings, and even going to Lausanne University. Um, I think now we have a really good framework to help you understand IoT and help you understand Lausanne as well. I like this process because this is our proof of concept process. So our customers who work with our solutions team, they go through this process and this allows them to come out on the other end successful. Uh, today, we're going to be focused on the divine and develop part, because when we're talking about learning IoT and learning LOSANT, this is where we're focused. So to kind of get your head wrapped around where we're fitting in the process, that's where we are today. So if you've seen any IoT presentation within the last three years, you've probably already seen the study. It's very commonly quoted. Uh, Cisco did the study and what they found was that three fourths of uh, all IoT projects are failing. Uh, and the entire purpose of the study was to figure out 
what was those key factors that caused the failing? And three of the things they pulled out were some things that we already know and love. So for example, you know, collaboration between IT and OT, or just the uh, technology behind IT itself. But it's this third point that I found very interesting. Uh, it was IoT expertise. 48% uh, of the factors were around IoT expertise, and that's huge. And though this study was from such a long time ago, uh, I still think we see this today. This is a huge uh, problem when in the success of an IoT project. And I think by learning these things and by developing this IoT expertise from a foundational level, we can really accomplish some cool things. So the three things I hope you take away from this presentation. So first is I hope you get a nice solid IoT foundation that you can use to talk about IoT, not only to your customers, colleagues, and clients. Uh, next is the ability to ask the right questions. So every time we approach a project or we see a project or uh, we get this new information, we ask ourselves very similar questions. And my hope is to give you that foundation today. And lastly, uh, the hope is to gain that IT expertise. So not only do you have that within a partner in LOSINT, but you also have that internally within yourself. And you can come together again to make some pretty cool things. So why this is all important? Uh, personally, I have the lucky opportunity to meet with all of our wonderful customers and partners to learn about their use cases and what they're doing in the world of IoT. Really, this presentation is me giving the information back to you. Um, as you, what you will notice is, is that this is the same tools that I use to actually train our team members here within LOSIN. Uh, so this deeper dive, the deeper dive, the insight is, uh, this is insight into how we're gearing up to educate you as our customers and partners. So along my journey, I found out one key thing, and this was the best realization ever. As we learned about IoT, my knowledge of LOSINT increased. And as I learned more about LOSINT, my knowledge of IoT increased. Uh, on the surface level, this is pretty obvious because we're a platform dedicated for IoT. Uh, but going through that process, I really felt like it was valid for me to point that out because all the IoT concepts that I was learning, whether in uh, news or through use cases, all helped uh, gain my knowledge about low sense and the features that we offer and why and vice versa. They tell a great story when you think about them together. So to begin our conversation, we're going to start at the define stage. And here, let's start from the absolute very beginning, the definition of IoT itself. In this case, here's a tweet from our Chief Product Officer, Brandon Kennedy. Uh, he tweets wonderful things about IoT all the time. Highly recommend you go and follow him. But in this case, he was talking about the definition of LOSIN. And here, what Brandon is describing is that IoT is not really a thing. It's more of a, of a, of a concept. Um, and when I saw this, I loved it. I thought this was totally the right direction and uh, a very common missing piece in people's IoT knowledge. So I built on it a little bit. For me, IoT is more of a, a view of the technology stack. So typically in SaaS-based applications, there's just a wealth of tools and libraries, but you're not doing hardware in those, in those use cases. Uh, when it comes to uh, typical hardware-based applications, uh, there, there is software involved, but it's nowhere near the ecosystem as we have in the software world. IoT is what happens when you have to look at this stack all at the same time for your application. Uh, and that's anywhere from hardware, software, networking, data science, programming, security, web applications. IoT is what happens when you look at all of these things for your application at the same time. Um, I love this stack because it really helped me frame where the different components are in IoT. And when looking at use cases and application where the proper resources needed to be had. So in this case, when we first came up with the stack, uh, I thought that this was going to be the key knowledge points of an IoT engineer. And that's actually how this presentation started. But after the presentation, the content developed, what we found was that this is not really the knowledge point of an IoT engineer. This is the different components of your application. And while you're building your application, what you actually do from uh, your, as a builder perspective, is you augment these stacks with three things, people, technology, and ecosystem. So 
depending on your in-house expertise, you may have individuals who are disciplined in any part of this stack. Because as you may know, each of these are different disciplines and generally uh, different people within organizations. Uh, and then when people aren't there, now we have the opportunity because IoT and the vast ecosystem we have, we have access to new technology tools like LoSAN, for example, um, and we can tap into ecosystem like partners, for example. And what you'll find is, as we talk throughout this presentation, is that as we talk about these stacks, uh, a lot of the things and a lot of decisions we made in Losan are going to come clear and make a lot more sense. So starting off with this question, here's where we always need to start. What are we building? Uh, IoT is huge, the ecosystem is vast, and the tool sets now give us the opportunity to solve really different types of problems. So we have to start with what are we building? And the first question I like to ask there is, okay, why? Like, why do we even buy IoT in general? Why is this even important? Uh, we found that amongst the, the tons of reasons why IoT becomes beneficial, for me, despite the fact that it's just darn cool, um, we buy it because it allows us to create those new products for our customers and obviously lead to increased revenue. Uh, we buy it because it allows us to either make our existing products better or more efficient from our learning from the data, which also ultimately lead to decreasing costs. And the third one is, uh, uh, I like this because this one's the, the most obvious one, uh, mitigating risks. Now, once we monitor things, we're able to manage our risk on an entirely different level. And IoT give us the tools to do that. But understanding why we buy is the first step. The second step is, Let's talk about some use cases. So IoT, since it's this vast ecosystem, it's a concept, right? We can't understand concepts without having anchors. So throughout this presentation, if you need use cases to anchor on, either think about this in context of your use case, or uh, here are three use cases that we're going to go through that serves as anchors for you to use as you're thinking about IoT throughout uh, the presentation. And the three we're going to talk about are asset tracking, um, huddle room monitoring, and industrial equipment monitoring. The cool thing about Lucent is that since the platform is generally horizontal, uh, we talk to a lot of customers and a lot of use cases uh, that are really different from this. But I like these three because A, they're really um, easy to understand, but B, these are three valuable use cases within IoT that allow us to talk, um, that translate very well to this discussion. So starting with asset tracking. So what is asset tracking? Uh, we have an asset, it's on the map, and now we can watch that asset moving on the map from point A to point B. And in a lot of these use cases too, we're also overlaying other data points with that as well. But why do we build asset tracking? A, the key thing, risk mitigation. So now that we have this asset on a map and it's going from point A to point B, that's information and a level of insight we didn't have before. Uh, next is increased productivity. Not only can we get if this asset is on a map, but we can, in the world of IoT, we can build this application. So whereas not only is the GPS values, but maybe this asset is on the truck with uh, things inside of the truck, like in code chain monitoring, for example. So now I need the GPS values and the temperature values. Uh, that gives our employees, our, our customers, looking at this information, which will lead to increased productivity uh, from a customer standpoint, uh, from a, sorry, from a employee standpoint. And then from a customer standpoint, we're talking about that improved service. Now they have a level of insight and data into this application in terms of asset that they never had before. Uh, next, industrial equipment monitoring. I like this example because in uh, this space, we typically work with the OEM, the person who actually, the, the company who actually makes the machine. So in this case, this example customer in the screenshot you see here uh, would make a generator. Uh, and in this world, we would sell this generator and that was the end of our customer engagement. But now with the new tools that we have, this new stack, we can not only sell that generator, but offer new value added services on top of that. Uh, and in this case, what that may look like is a subscription service for the OEM's customers to monitor the telemetry data of the devices that they're purchasing. Um, that's a huge value add for them in that space. Uh, increased productivity. 
So once, once we now have these machines and now we have the telemetry data of the machines and the history of that data, uh, all that information can go back into making technicians more productive. And lastly, now that we have this information, uh, the cool thing here is once we build up historical information of something like a machine like this, we're able to do predictive maintenance. We're able to say, well, when this machine goes down, just automatically go and send an alert. Uh, this makes customers happy. And as we all know, happy customers mean they stick around long. And they stick around long, that means uh, we increase the value uh, about, of the relationship between us and that customer. And lastly, smart environment. This one is my personal favorite, uh, mostly because it's so darn cool. I like the smart environment because it's all about how do we measure the environments that we're in. And this environment could be anywhere from a, a, a meeting room in your office to the floor of the office to the multiple floors. So you have the building or all the way up to the campus, right? So this smart environment is just understanding uh, that space. And the image you see here in this example, uh, the diagram is of a floor plan and there's three huddle rooms and we can see if the huddle room is available or not. But the key benefits of smart environment really starts with space utilization. How can we understand this space so uh, hopefully we can make it more valuable? And I like it because this is for two reasons and two reasons, employee productivity and employee satisfaction uh, and also visitor uh, satisfaction as well. Some of our customers have invested millions into modernizing their spaces, uh, mostly as a hiring incentive. Um, in the real world, what this looked like is uh, ping pong tables on, on, in a corner. But for an enterprise, are they being used? Can we make that space more valuable? Uh, answering those questions offer a new level of insight to operations teams that they just simply didn't have before. And now it can empower us to make whole new decisions that A, lead to employee productivity and employee satisfaction, in this case, visitor satisfaction as well. So those are the three use cases that I want you to keep in mind. But as you think about your applications and your use cases, don't limit yourself to these three. Uh, here are some good ways to, to frame that you're thinking about identifying where use cases may be. Um, so if you're monitoring something, well, what kind of monitoring are you doing? Uh, what more can you do with the monitoring? Can you eventually start to you know, predict things from there? Uh, asset tracking. Well, what are you tracking? Uh, we talked about not only do you have that asset, but um, the asset may be, say, an expensive piece of equipment uh, that has entire use cases around there. Or we mentioned the example of cold chain monitoring where this asset is a truck and this truck may have other sensors on it, like a temperature sensor. Um, and then the last one, this is my favorite, I need data about. I think IoT has found its home with data. So anywhere where there's, okay, here's uh, something within your environment and we can grab data off of it, there's some value to be learned there. So just to take a pause, let's take a step back, the questions to ask yourself at this stage. One, keep the stack in mind, and two, keep your definition in mind, because that starts with, do we all have the same definition of IoT? Um, later in the presentation, I'll tell you uh, about um, a nice age-old battle uh, we've been having internally, and I think I have an answer to who won, and I would like to share that with you all today. But I think having that same definition of IoT really sets the stage for how we talk about these problems. Uh, next, what are the key benefits of our solution? Well, once we understand the key benefits, now we can understand, well, this technology stack, since it can be applied in so many different ways, well, let's talk about the best way to get the benefits that we want. Uh, and, that, and lastly, by looking at this, doc, uh, this stack, it's very clear where we need to augment knowledge. Um, so for example, when I joined Losent, I was very strong in the web application space, security and programming but the hardware and networking were areas that I quickly did a lot of research and learned on. Um, and having a stack like this would have helped me identify that that's what my focus area should be a long time ago. Now, let's talk about developing. Whenever uh, I begin these conversations with customers, I love this question. And this is a, the, one of the best questions to ask yourself uh, when you're thinking about any IoT use case. Uh, even from the start, where does the data come from? Uh, the 
I, what I find is that since a lot of these use cases are so cool and they're so easy to dream up, it's very, it's very hard to come back down to, okay, well, at the end of the day, there needs to be some hardware here tracking or some sensor or some data point that we can use to answer our question to, to get the benefits that we want in the first place. So we really have to focus hard on where does the data come from itself. Looking back at our three use cases, we can start to answer this question. So for example, in the asset tracking world, I, I need GPS data. Uh, I probably need a piece of hardware that I can attach to something to get that GPS data. And the huddle room monitoring example, we talked about these being meeting rooms. Well, I need some sensor in the room to tell me if there's someone in there or not. Uh, and then an industrial equipment monitoring example, I love this one because the hardware is pretty obvious. It's the generator in this case. Uh, but again, answering that question, where does the data come from is super important because, okay, the data's here in the generator. All right, how do we get that to the cloud? So when I'm in my develop stage, I like to repeat this question, this sentence to myself. Um, what I find is that uh, these three things commonly get overlapped and misunderstood. So your hardware sends data using a protocol over a network. Uh, this helped me frame what where like hardware sits in the picture, where protocol sits in the picture, when network sits in the picture. But in our during our develop stage, we have to understand all three together in one sentence to really uh, move through this stage successfully. So in this case, let's start off with hardware. To talk about hardware in the world of IoT, I love the smart environment because when we look at use cases, even as simple as you walk into a room and uh, the room comes alive because it knows that you're in a room. Uh, that's a pretty sophisticated use case that involves many pieces of hardware and many pieces of uh, data points. So in this case, if we kind of work our way through this graph, we get, we get this awesome uh, line here. So I need to find a space for a meeting room. Well, uh, that's a one piece of hardware because now this device needs to get that information. Uh, then we have over here where in the room, we need motion sensors to actually determine which rooms are free. So that's another piece of hardware. And then you have to ask yourself, how does how did that data go from the motion sensor eventually to the cloud at some point? Um, and then we have this a whole other level of interactivity kind of tying these two pieces together where uh, we can A, get notifications when the room is available, uh, maybe even waypoints to that room. And now those sensors that are in the room can now know that there's someone in here. So this use case covers data and hardware from a bunch of different angles. So let's break that down a little bit. Whenever I am engaging in a conversation about LOSANT or teaching LOSANT, um, and now starting today teaching IoT, I'm gonna start with this graph. Uh, I th I th this is a really awesome way to understand, well, okay, once we identify where the data comes from, okay, this helps me find the path to getting that data to the cloud. Um, and just because we know IoT reflects LOSINT, the story is very similar to how, how data gets to LOSINT as well. The easiest to comprehend is the standalone device. So uh, this device is directly connected. And as you see the line going from the device directly to the cloud in this case, which is LOSINT. Uh, in the consumer world, this is devices like your Google Home or Alexa, um, but these devices have cloud connectivity. Next is, I like to call it um, the API route. So in a lot of different IoT use cases, we're not actually talking to the end device itself. We're talking to some API or service that is talking to the, on behalf of a physical device. So a great example here, if you've ever been through the LOSANT walkthrough, uh, the walkthrough takes you through an application where you pull data from a weather API into LOSANT to display on a dashboard. Well, in that use case, we never talk to a physical device, but I'm sure somewhere on the other end of our weather station, there is a standalone device measuring weather, but we don't have access to that. Um, and the value here is really for maintenance purposes. We get a nice clean API and we don't have to worry about the end devices. And the third route, and this route is pretty fun 
because this gives us access to a whole nother level of power within the world of IT. And this is where edge comes in. In the industrial space, we talked about that generator, that machine. Well, typically those general machines have PLCs and those PLCs expose their logic in some way, shape or form. So in this case, uh, we have Modbus, TCP, OPC UA, Serial. Those are some uh, examples of what those protocols may look like. But what we know about those protocols is that they're not cloud connected. We need a gateway. So what this gateway allows us to do is uh, our machines and devices here locally to talk to this gateway and the gateway forwards those messages to the cloud on behalf of the device. And this is an industrial example, but to give you a real easy consumer example is think about your Apple AirPods. Uh, they're a Bluetooth device, your phone is a gateway and it gets to the cloud. I guarantee you, you can take any IoT use case and map it into one of the three pop paths to the clouds that you see here. Um, it, it may be either one of these three or a combination of them. So your hardware sends data using a protocol over a network. Now, I know it's pretty obvious that we skipped protocol here, but um, since it's protocol over a network, we got to talk about the network first. English didn't let me be great there. So to talk about the network, I want to talk about the asset tracking use case uh, because the network in this use case is very easy to kind of wrap your mind around. Uh, we're talking about something like an asset that's measuring a piece of equipment or a truck or a data point from going from point A to point B. What we're doing there is we need a way to actually track this device from going from point A to point B. And from a network perspective, we don't have much option. Uh, if we think, if you look at this uh, dashboard that you see here, we can see this device going from the edge of California all the way to what it looks like um, central, like somewhere in the middle of America. Can't even see what that dot is. But the cool part here is that there's only one network available that we can use, cellular. In this case, uh, this is from a customer example. The customer is Nibbling. They make awesome cellular-based GPS devices uh, that they give to their customers and their customers um, attach those assets to something that they, that's valuable to them. And what Nibbling provides is an awesome way using LoSant to see that information about those devices. So coming back to our use case, uh, in this use case that I just shown, uh, what Nimblelink is doing is they have the GPS tracker, which is the image you saw before. They're reporting to their own service, which their data actually forwards to Low Saint Cloud, what then eventually goes and powers their end user experiences. Um, but as we know now about looking at this path, that's only one way that this, this could work. Um, say, for example, we were to get ourselves one of those GPS devices. There's nothing stopping us from taking that device connecting it directly to the cloud and using that to prepare our experiences. So when you think about networks, it's really easy to get lost in this space. There's a lot of different networks, a lot of different buzzwords, and I would like to encourage you to think about them as tools in your toolbox, not necessarily things you need to go and learn and dive deep in. Uh, the cool thing about IoT is that we have access to all of these different networks. It's one layer of our stack. So they're depending on the use case and depending on other factors, we can choose, pick and choose what networks work best, especially when we're thinking about, you know, how do we create the best IoT solution? There are three factors that I use to determine um, networks for the use case. And the first one is really around availability. So as we talked about for asset tracking, cellular was the obvious obvious case there because if we're talking about going across the United States it's available. Um, another uh, high factor is cost. So when we're looking at networks like your Wi-Fi your cost may not be in the network itself but your ISP. If we look at use cases maybe that involve say private 5G to well to take that cellular base station and have it on premises uh, there's cost associated with it or to actually maintain and manage a low power wider network like LoRa or Z-Wave. Uh, there's costs associated with that. Uh, and bandwidth. As we all know, we are not going to uh, use certain networks to stream video uh, just due to bandwidth purposes. 
uh, the reason why we have different even cellular networks like MBIOT and different 5G is because of those application different bandwidth requirements. So as you think about networks and as you look at networks, they're just tools in your toolbox. What's really important is, well, what's available, um, what is cost effective for their solution, and you know, does it allow us to transmit the data that we need? Um, answering those questions are the best first step ever amongst the long, long list of things that uh, you would need to evaluate during the network. Now, protocols. To help me explain protocols, what I want to do is talk a little bit about the industrial equipment monitoring example, uh, mostly because that used edge. So in this case, in that example, uh, there was a generator and that generator, uh, say, let's say had a Modbus PLC and that PLC was communicating with the low scent edge agent and talking back to the cloud. When we look at this map and we look at the protocols, Every arrow that you see here, these three arrows, uh, in this diagram, it represents MQTT or HTTP. But in the world of IoT, we have access to other protocols as well, even to get data to the cloud. Uh, so in this case, through Edge, we get access to protocols like Modbus, TCP, OPC UA, Serial. Um, and then for smart environment use cases, that may look like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, UDP, LoRa, Zigbee. When we're looking at our solution and our use case and evaluating protocols, what I found was that there are three things to really keep in mind. A, use case dependent. Uh, protocols are typically defined by the use case, the selected hardware or the preferred network. Um, for example, uh, for serial, we're gonna use serial to actually have two devices communicate with each other over hard wire. Uh, but in the world of realm of uh, Mob, um, MQTT or HTTP, that's obviously going from a device to an internet device or devices connect to each other over the internet. So protocols are typically use case dependent. Uh, next is availability. Our protocols are purpose built generally. So depending on the purpose or use case, the ecosystem that you're going into may already have defined protocols. Uh, the best example that I have here is in the smart environment, uh, low power or wide area networks are very popular. So uh, LoRa, ZigBee, Z-Wave are popular protocol choices in the smart environment space. And uh, in industrial, we see Modbus, OPC UA, a raw TCP, uh, and those are the protocols that that community has standardized on. But here's my favorite general rule of thumb, because where the protocols are, how the data gets to low scent, uh, can get really confusing in this space. However, here's the rule of thumb I like to mention. If device can connect to the cloud using MQTT or HTTP, you can 100% send data to LoSAN. If you're talking about the translation of other protocols to one of these two, that's where things like the edge agents in or some other translation protocols can come in. But generally, we can get data to the cloud over MQTT and HTTP. Uh, that's a great way to know if you can send that data to LoSAN itself. So your hardware uh, sends data using a protocol over the network. As you think about these things, keep this sentence in mind to kind of wrap, wrap your head around where you are in that develop stage. This leads to a very good question. How do I get started? In this case, if you want to get started on the embedded device side, here are two devices I highly recommend to A, have, download, flash, and use to start playing around with, okay, what hardware networks and protocols. Uh, this is the Arduino MKR Wi-Fi 1010. It's really good. Um, and this is Particles Photon. Both of these devices, we, we see them being used a lot in the hacker and makerspace, but also um, enterprises using them because of their low cost point and awesome communities as a way to prototype early solutions. And on the edge side, if you're looking to experiment with edge and edge networks, Honestly, the best piece of hardware is a Raspberry Pi. Um, it's super low cost, it's very easy to use, the community is awesome, and uh, it supports the low scent edge agent. So it's a really good way to start digging into some of these tool sets. So just to reevaluate our three methods to the, to the cloud, we have our edge method, we have standalone directly to the cloud, and we also have do a third party service. So now that we have our application and we have this stack, let's take a step back. So we've defined IoT. Uh, we have started to figure out, okay, 
What are the benefits? What are the key value points you're trying to get out of this? Uh, next, where does the data come from and how does it get to the cloud? We're now equipped to answer that question. And now that gives us back to our stack. For your use case, the next thing to look at is, all right, here's my stack. Where do we need help? Where do we need to augment either people, technology, or ecosystem in this stack? Here is where I find it super interesting. So a long time ago when uh, we made the decision to separate the components into a uh, low set into components, it seemed like a crazy idea at the time because, well, here's this platform that has all these different features. Why are we going to segment them to, to into components? But I really like that this is a helpful way of explaining it because as you can see is, is that our components map to these layers of the stack. So for edge, you got hardware for devices and data sources. Um, I can make the case for networking, uh, dashboarding and notebooks in Losent are data science tools, software, that's our uh, workflow engine and web applications layers experiences. When we talk about that stack and augmenting it with people, technology and ecosystem, I think that's real value of where Losent fits in that picture is because our components are key pieces of those stack and as again, as I said, as I learn more about LoSant, I learn more about IoT. So what was interesting for me was, was that since I knew that all the stacks had different expertise, well, it's pretty easy to, to say that, well, in you end user experiences, if you have web application experiences, you're going to be really successful there. It's going to make a lot of sense in that realm. Uh, for the visual workflow engine, if you have software or general program experience, uh, you're going to be very successful in the workflow engine. Uh, for data analytics, specifically here, let's talk about uh, low stand notebooks, which is our batch processing tool. If you're familiar with data science and Jupyter and Jupyter notebooks, uh, that realm is going to feel like home. So our components reflect the stack greatly. And with our components aren't there, I think that's where the low stand partner ecosystem partner ecosystem comes in to fill in those other areas of the stack that your use case may not have. So now that we're in a low stand realm, I want to talk about, all right, what is the path to learning Losant? This is a slide we had on every single deeper dive that we've had in the past. And recently we decided to update it and the order changed as well. And as you look at this, this is the order you should go about learning Losant, uh, at least the recommended path we recommend. So first, let's start with the Losant documentation. Once you get there, the resources that are available to you look like what is Losant? So this is a high level document about all the components and the value they provide to you. Uh, the Losant walkthrough. If you need a quick way to jump into the platform just to understand or something to send your team to get their mind around it, the walkthrough is perfect there. The workflow lab. The workflow lab is an awesome tool to start to learn and build uh, within the workflow engine. The lab is separated into suites. Each suite covers a different topic and it allows you to practice using the workflow engine. Uh, it's all based on webhooks and triggering workflows. So by learning how to use the workflow lab, you learn a little bit more about workflows too. And it's super simple. You come in here, you press play, and the workflow lab will trigger your workflow with a set of inputs and expect the results, expect a certain result output. It's a nice and easy way to learn how to use the workflow engine. In this case, as you can see, all of my tests are failing, so I should probably go back and fix this webhook and do some work on my workflow lab. Next is Losant University. And Losant University is obviously a very one important to my heart, but the Losant University, as you go through, I like it because it's separated into the courses. So each course has its own set of videos that you can use to learn about that specific component. And in this case, we, you can see courses on like, what is Losant uh, data visualization and Losant experiences. Uh, Losant University is a great way to hop into Losant and understand those components from uh, a fundamental level and growing your experience there. And once you get done with Losant University, you can get your certificate of completion. And all of you here today, if you get your certificate and let us know in the forums, I'll be sure to send you something special. Next is really hands-on tutorials. Uh, Brandon, our Chief Product Officer, has recently published this tutorial called Analyzing IoT Image Data Using Losant and the Google Vision API. Um, our blog is filled with tutorials in this light. They are a key learning tool for you as you go about Losant for one of two reasons. A, 
there might be an example of what you're building there already. Or B, we talked about the stack and understanding the stack. Well, these tutorials allow you to expand your uses as well. And lastly, the low cent forums. So along your journey and along your help, we are, I think the most important part is we're augmenting that stack with technology ecosystem and most importantly, people. And low cent, we got your back. So as you are going through your process and you have questions, feel free to reach out on the forums and we'll be happy to help. There's one last thing I wanna leave you with. And I wanna go back to our use case side to talk about that a little bit. We have these use cases and now that we have this stack, the one thing I want, want you to keep in mind is that as you're building in one domain within IoT, it makes it really easy to build in the other domains of IoT. For example, uh, in the industrial equipment monitoring space, here we have a generator that generates sending data to a platform. However, that generator is also in a space, a space that can be tracked, which kind of blurs the line between smart environment and this huddle room use case, because this could easily be where the generator is within the floor plan, um, along with the telemetry data. So once we actually take IoT and we zoom out and we look at this stack, stack the reason why we say start with a small problem is because once you're able to solve a problem with this stack, it makes it really easy to translate that problem across different domains. So as you're thinking about your use cases within IoT, even if you are in one of these verticals, I encourage you to think about what other verticals and value adds because we're now looking at the stack, could you easily build it into your current existing application or to extend the capabilities of your current application. And uh, because now this is the end of my presentation, I wanna go back here because this is my takeaway. Um, if you wanna go and learn about LoSent and IoT, I highly recommend this five-step process. Uh, and uh, this should guide your learning, hopefully to building some really awesome things in the world of IoT. And just remember, as always, as you learn more about IoT, um, a lot of stuff in LoSent is gonna make a lot more sense. And as you appreciate the knowledge of LoSent, um, your concepts in the world of IT are going to make a lot more sense too as well. I really appreciate you listening and now I'm going to kick it back over to Nugeen so we can hop in some Q&A. Great, thank you Tehran. Uh, we do have a couple of questions that have come through uh, and I'll get to them in just a second after one last note. Let me pull this up. Great, hopefully you all can see my screen. Okay, so um, we do have another webinar coming up. So please save the date for that. Uh, Adam Daniel, who is our VP of Solutions, will be discussing a contact tracing application we've built in the wake of the COVID pandemic. He'll be diving into how companies are approaching, getting back to business, uh, looking to implement IoT uh, in very new and different ways. So you can register for that at lovesant.com slash deeperdive. And then a couple questions that have come up. Um, I have a question here that is asking, is access to LoSant University free? Um, and, and yes, it is, but Tron, if you wanna delve deeper into the resources and how, how we, uh, or how the access for those works. Yeah, the, so the best place to go is university.losant.com. That will take you right to our uh, LMS, our learning management system. And from there, uh, it actually, if you're logged into LoSent, you should hop right in and be able to take all the courses. We wanted to make sure that they were free for everyone using LoSent within our community. Great. Uh, I have another question here that's actually asking um, if it's possible to show an industrial equipment monitoring application and the dashboard for that. Um, the answer to that, um, a great resource that Tehran pointed out was the Deeper Dive webinars. We do have an example of an industrial equipment monitoring application that is uh, available for you to view on there. Uh, additionally, if you go into our, um, if you go into LoSan, have a Sandbox account and uh, create an application template, uh, you can actually download the industrial equipment monitoring application, the one, the exact one that Tehran showed today. I can actually show a preview right that of it really quick, Nugeen. I have my computer sure. set up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I believe you have the ability to share. So. Just to give you a quick preview of what Nugeen was mentioning. Uh, the cool thing about all the use cases that we talked about 
is that within Losent, they're all backed by a template. Um, and also the cool thing here as well is all of these templates, the asset tracker, the Hunter monitor and the industrial equipment monitor all have deeper dive taking you through the template and everything that's involved. So you can see what's included there. But in this case, I already have the industrial equipment monitor application set up. And um, within this application and the cool thing about templates is that they always come with the readme. That readme gives you all the information that you need to know to kind of get started. But the templates come with devices, dashboards and workflows. But most importantly, that experience that you saw, the, the screenshot of it, uh, that's a real experience that comes with the template. Uh, each template comes with a data simulator. So all the data that you see here is simulated, it's not coming from a real device, um, but the templates are meant to feel real and be good examples of those use cases. So in this case, we have that overview dashboard so we can see me as a customer, all of my generators, and then I can click that generator to drill in down deeper on its telemetry data, see its status, it's running, and all the different information about it. Um, and when you start from this template, this is what you get. Great. Um, the next question that we had is, uh, Tehran, you mentioned some good steps on learning LOSANT. Are there any good paths or resources for going further into specific use cases with IoT? Yes. So uh, my resources there will be mostly around, uh, and I prepared this slide because I knew I was going to talk about it, uh, is social fodder. So when we talk about all these different use cases, the best way is to just expose yourself. Um, and then engage in these in the same question, the same process that we've gone through throughout this slide. Um, and that's the way to really start to get a keen sense of what are all the different use cases look like in IoT. Um, if you need specific recommendations, here are some of the, uh, the places where I go for my information to learn more about the use cases. The one that's not mentioned here is Stacy on IoT. That's probably my number one resource that I would add to this list that you see here on my screen. And to add on to this, we have another question that's asking, I've completed LOSANT University. What should be my next steps if I want to learn more about LOSANT and IoT in general? Yeah, that's a great question. And that takes me back down to my five-step process. So uh, A, I would recommend the workflow lab in the documentation, but now that you're going to LOSANT University, now it's time to start digging into those use case specific items and building within LOSANT. Uh, the deeper dive series are great because in this case, we're talking about learning IoT and LOSANT, but the deeper dives uh, that we have available really go in uh, to LOSANT and building and use cases and pro tips while you're doing so. And then the next step is going to be those hands-on tutorials. So all the tutorials that you see in our blogs, I highly recommend going, pull a tutorial and going through it and trying it. Those are the things to really kind of sharpen your skills there. Um, and here, really the tutorial is building your use cases, right? And building your story into your application. And there's a lot of learning there. So those will be my two next recommendations based off of this path. Uh, I do have another question that might be good for either Tehran or for Brandon. Um, what is the best resource to find hardware that is capable of running the Losan Ed Edge agent? Is there a catalog of certified hardware? And uh, certainly I can talk about partnerships, but if Tehran or Brandon, if you want to take this first. Yeah, so this one, I really like this answer. So I'm on my screen. Uh, we talked we talked about the Pi. The Pi is just one example. The cool thing about the Edge Agent is that the Edge Agent is shipped using Docker. If you're not familiar with Docker, Docker is uh, a, a, a Unix containerization technology. Um, what it allows us to do is uh, ship the Edge Agent to you in one container and not have to install any other dependencies. So they, because we leverage Docker and the ecosystem behind Docker, we get a lot of flexibility there. The Edge Agent can be installed on any Linux capable gateway. That is generally what we say. Um, but we've seen use cases where like um, on uh, Windows operating systems, the Edge Agent can be installed. Uh, and on for testing as well, you can install the Edge Agent on your Mac as uh, if you want to just do some quick testing. But the piece of hardware that I recommend the most, the, the quickest to get started, is 100% the Pi. And I'd like to add on to that as well. Uh, as you are looking at any type of production application or solution. Uh, we have built out uh, many partnerships with hardware connectivity vendors uh, and 
part of that process is understanding that our software is compatible with their services as well. So if that is something you're interested in, I'd encourage you to take a look at our partners page at flowsant.com slash partners, uh, or you can always engage with someone here at the company uh, within Lowsant to, to help you understand better what options do exist. Um, that is a lot of the work that our solutions team does today. Um, so last question that I have today. Oh, actually two more. Um, if I need to use the Losan Edge agent for a local protocol, how is that deployed or installed on my gateway? And I know you answered that with uh, the Docker container, um, but is there documentation that you can point to, Teron? Yes. Uh, in the docs, there are uh, two pieces of documentation when it comes to the Edge agent that I would totally recommend. And that's the Edge agent usage and Edge agent installation docs. Uh, they walk you through uh, setting up the edge agent and uh, how to use it. So for in this case, how will we actually run the edge agent with a configuration file, which is the recommended way. Uh, here's that example command here. And if you have any questions, as Nugeen mentioned, uh, don't hesitate to reach out in the LoSAMP forums or to us. These are totally problems that we're happy to help you get on board with when it comes to, when it comes to LoSAMP. Great. And the very last question I have, um, when building in Losant, how can I be proactive in learning more features and learning more as I scale my application? Oh, continue to watch the deeper dives. I think uh, the, not only uh, the deeper dives, and as I mentioned before, the deeper dives hands-on tutorials, as you go about learning through Losant, I think we we're going to continue to produce these deeper dives and tell great stories about IoT. Um, they're probably, in my opinion, the best way to continue this conversation. Great, and I, I think that's it for questions. So thank you so much, Teron, uh, for going through this. I appreciate uh, everyone hopping on and, and watching our deeper dive uh, this month. And I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next one. Uh, if any questions, if you have any more questions that haven't been answered, please feel free to reach out to someone on our team uh, and we will make sure to get you an answer as soon as possible through uh, our contact page or, or whatever it is. Thank you.